Hey Daily Story Manifestors, I'm so glad you're here. On this channel, we give you writing pep talks, writing mindset advice, and all things storytelling every Tuesday and Thursday. I'm Leah Falls, writer, actor, and mindset coach, and today we got a juicy topic for you. How can we get those tears out of the readers? Well, one way at least. Stay tuned. All right, are we ready to let out our diabolical sides and play those heartstrings? Those heartstrings <laughs> get very German, apparently. I had initially planned to make this a five ways to break your reader's heart video, but I'm gonna make this a series instead because I have quite a lot to say about this one one. And there's something to be said about really analyzing a tool that we're using so that we can implement it on the whole spectrum. And this one is it. My first big tip for this is to approach every relationship and stories are all about relationships. Sometimes not necessarily between different people, but more with themselves or, you know, nature, the different conflict areas but every story is about relationship and to approach those relationships from a place of love find the love in them instead of focusing on the hate because it's very easy to to go to a character and when you create like antagonistic relationships and see like we hate that about them we hate that about them but you might get the sympathy of the reader you might get yeah no i get that i hate that too but you don't get them to feel what the character is feeling because the character you know, if you just don't like someone, but are completely uninvolved with them, there's no stakes, there's no turmoil. And we want that turmoil when we create really good conflict. So find the love in every relationship. Now, why does this work? It works because real heartbreak lies in hurt and in unfulfilled expectations. And to be hurt and to have expectations that are unfulfilled, we need to come from a place of love because we expect good things. So I'm going to give you an example of, of an antagonistic relationship I have in my debut novel, which will be coming out next summer. It's a fantasy book called Goddess of Limbo. In it, I have an underage bride who was in an arranged marriage she's now an adult but looking back on it it's it's a tragic setup in itself and of course we feel bad for it but like there's no emotion in it yet we want the reader to really feel and experience what she's experienced what she feels and for that we need to find the love so what i did to find the love in her obviously abusive relationship and this abusive setup is I looked for what she was expecting, what she was hoping for. Because if you, if you look from, especially from a younger perspective on that, there, there are expectations, there is excitement in some way. And twisting that makes it very, very powerful. So uh, as an example, she, she already loved science and she was hoping for someone who can, you know, help her with her experiments. So it will be spoiler zone after that, but that didn't happen. And that, disappointment of that expectation is so much more powerful than just being like yeah this is a he was a terrible person and he behaved terribly because then we just we expected it so there's there's no there's no little little sprinkle of heartbreak in that also the potential of love is very very powerful and it's found in any relationship and that's where we as readers become very enraged too when we see that potential and then it's not lived out that's where you really start hating someone because it's like no it could be so good why is it not you know so when you write antagonistic relationships when you create villains do look do look at what they love too and do look at where the love, where the potential, where the good expectations between the hero and the villain can be and between two antagonistic parties, if you're not really like working with that kind of setup, could be because there can be a lot of great stuff to explore. But this whole idea of finding the love works even better in relationships that aren't inherently antagonistic, even if they are in the moment for your main character. Uh, for example, relationship relationship conflicts, relationship fights, I'm talking about romantic relationships, couple fights. I I get so frustrated when reading, and I know I'm not the only one, when we see a couple and you just see what they dislike about each other, what, what drives them up the wall, but we don't really see why, and if we just see them in conflict, we don't have a reason to care for them because there's, there's no stakes. I mean, it's just, okay, you two shouldn't be together. 
it's an easy solution, but we don't want easy solutions. We want struggle. So that's why I really like focusing on that in romantic relationships. So let's say we have these two parties and we have something that really drives them up the wall. But why? Is it because they're afraid that the person that they think their partner are isn't really them? And I'm not talking in like a spy sense, but more in a maybe I had the wrong picture of you and what they actually love doesn't exist. That's terrifying. There's so much drama in that. Or could it come from a different place of love? Like uh, they know that, they care, that their partner wouldn't want to behave like that. So, so they're concerned. I mean, that's also, you know, that's, that creates a very complicated relationship dynamic where you can also explore like, well, why are they so focused on their partner doing that instead of themselves? But we need that basis of love first. And when you write a relationship, even if, you, if your whole story is about a relationship falling apart, you need to be super aware of where that love initially came from. Where are they really attached? Where does it hurt for them to lose? Why is this fight painful? And the reader doesn't inherently know that. The characters go into this relationship and they have all this history. And if the writer doesn't take the time to explore that history and to find little details to, to translate that to the reader, the reader won't know. They're just going to be, you know, as, like if you're in a mall and see some people fighting and you're just, they don't seem like a healthy couple, but we don't want that. The reader can see that they might be, not be a healthy couple, but the reader shouldn't be able to discard it because if we just discard it, it's not powerful. So basically my rule here is no love, no stakes. And that also applies to the general big conflict and motivation of your overarching plot, but I don't wanna dive into that too much. But you know, that's also what creates very inactive passive characters. If they don't have anything that they love, then you know, they're just apathetic. We all love reading about apathetic people. So how I implement that in my writing, uh, I have one example that I want to share. It's not a romantic relationship, but it's a father and son relationship. And they used to be very close, but um, then a lot of things happened, you know, growing up and the environment that they're in has sort of torn them apart. Also their own backstories. But once again, don't want to spoil too much of that. But um, it's really important for me that I came from that place of love and that place of shared history together and they know what the potential is and they are unable to really connect to each other so they just they don't understand each other anymore they they have troubles communicating both of them are like well why is it impossible to give each other a hug I don't know it just is but that in itself if that is all I would show the reader it wouldn't be sad because it's just oh it's a bad father-son relationship that sucks it sucks for them and we can once again feel sympathy but we're not going to feel it unless we see the potential of love that's there and that, unless we see the love that is there but can't be expressed because that's when it really becomes painful that's when the question changes from when will they just give up on their relationship when will they just you know the sun just moves away and they'll just stop talking to each other to how can they recover what they had how can they connect how can how can they become what they used to be and that creates a very interesting dynamic. It creates dynamic relationships instead of stagnant and doomed ones. And I see a lot of stagnant and doomed relationships and it really bugs me because even in our personal life, oop, that's the mic, <laughs> in our personal life, with every relationship we have, if they're in our life and we have complex emotions towards them that aren't just, they're my neighbor then there is love in there. There's potential in there, there's expectations in there, and, and those carry that relationship that it's not just, you know, nothing. I mentioned it a little bit earlier before, but we're gonna go into it again now. That principle can also be found in the character versus self. We can find the love in the character versus self. So I encourage you to not approach their own insecurities from a point of, yep, they just think that they're too shy, they, they're too that, they're never enough, they hate themselves. And instead, look at what versions of themselves they would like to be. What versions of themselves they, they can't quite reach or they've lost. Those are versions of themselves that they love. So every person has something that they love, even if they're in deep self-hate. They have love for themselves. 
Let's look at one of the simpler ones. Let's look at your character thinks about themselves that they're too shy. So they've assigned that to themselves. They hate that. Damn it, I'm shy. Okay, so where is that coming from? Where's, where can we find the love? First of all, there could be another version of their character. For example, in elementary school, they had a lot of friends and that made them feel safe. So now they're carrying around the loss of having lost that version of themselves that they really liked and trying to understand why. And they're assigning the shyness to it because that's what's keeping them, what they perceive at least, what's keeping them from the person they used to be. So now where's the love in that? They loved their old friends. They loved who they used to be. They loved how safe that made them feel. So all of that love makes us a really sad situation where we can actually empathize and feel with the character because it's not just, I'm too shy, yeah, okay, it's, it's a blanket statement that we maybe say about ourselves too. Once again, there's a sympathy, maybe a superficial connection. But when we dig into why that is painful and where the love is in that statement, then we can dig up stuff that actually really hits the reader. Let's say your character is very self-loathing. That's where it gets really exciting because self-hate also comes from a place of love. We can also find a love in there because... Okay, the character hates themselves, so they understand that there's some kind of mismatched identity. Who they are, who they're being, who they feel like, doesn't actually match who they think they can be. So there's this initial love for their true self, for who they really want to be. And they hate that they're in a situation where they can't quite live like that. They hate that something is holding them back, that, that, that they're not their full self. But all of that comes from love. They love themselves enough to have such strong hate emotions for things that they know aren't good for them. And that kind of creates a tragic cycle too, because, you know, self-hate is initially not very motivating, so they're going to stay in that, but they also want to know better. They, they have this love for themselves. They want to get out of it. And it just, it, it circles, it's a struggle, it's dynamic. It's not a stagnant, yep, they're just self-loathing. Given up on myself. That's kind of the antidote to that, a character who's just given up on themselves. And sure, you can have things that happen to them. And actually, I have a few characters who start out like that, but they're side characters because making a protagonist who's just given up on themselves interesting and engaging is very difficult because why should the reader not give up on them if the character has? And sometimes characters seem like they have but they haven't quite and that's where as writers if we want to stay within that narrative it's very helpful to dig for that love and this whole struggle between those negative things that the character signs to themselves and these negative loops that they're stuck in it creates much more heartbreak if we look at the love and look at at the potential of all of that than just looking at the character who's in the state and that's just their state because then we are just meant to feel sorry for them and as a reader I don't really enjoy that because it's not a journey we're not we're not taking the person onto anyone we're not taking the reader onto any kind of journey and that's why we read and consume stories too we want to understand how characters deal with conflict and deal with obstacles because it's it's in the human nature to to comprehend that better so if they just don't then we don't and then we're not engaged. So that's why finding the love is such a great trick to create that deep heartbreak and that deep struggle and also that that's the kind of heartbreak that makes you want to keep reading because there's still hope. It's combined. So give the character something they love and find everything they love and then you give the reader something to love and root for. Everyone understands what it means to care for something. And everyone understands what it means to not care. So, all right, let's say we give them something, something to not care about. That's going to translate to the reader. They just won't care. And why are we reading about something that we don't care about? But if we give them something that the character cares about, anything, even within a constellation where they really hate something, then we, as readers, care too. And that's my first tip on how to break your reader's heart. Now, I got at least four more of these coming, so join me in my diabolical writing bedroom. 
Yes, all right. I personally really love writing tragedy. I think there's so much to be gained and so much to be explored and found and process through it. I think creating catharsis for readers is one of the most exciting things to do. So I encourage you to deeply dig into that love and to find it so that we can really take our readers on a journey. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. But before you go, I would love to hear from you. When has finding the love really helped you in your storytelling? And what kind of stories can you think of, books, movies, that did this really well? I would love to continue the conversation down in the comments. And also, if you have any questions, let me know. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe and share it with someone who it would help as well. Let's, let's spread the love. Said that last time, I still mean it. <laughs> you can find us at Story Manifestos on Instagram and uh, StoryManifestos.com on the wild web. Uh, please subscribe to our new status for more inspiration. We, we post stuff on Instagram, we post stuff there. And also check us at services. We offer writing services such as Story Fix to unstuck yourself. It's a really great way to get back into your story. Also manuscript critiques, sensitivity reads, character interviews, and much more. Go check it out. Uh, that's it. Thank Thank you so much for watching again and I hope you have a lovely, lovely time breaking those hearts. See you next time.